So the question asks for a finding relative extreme mode of the given function. Uh, we will use the first derivative test again. So it means that we, we are interested in first finding critical uh, points of the function. Then using first derivative test, we will determine which one of these guys are going to give us some um, uh, relative max or relative mean. Okay, so, so first thing is first, find uh, critical uh, points or critical numbers of F. Critical numbers or critical points are the points either at which the, the function is not differentiable or the function is differentiable, but the derivative is zero. So here, f, f is not differentiable at or f prime exists, but f prime of c is equal to zero. In this example, we won't have any of the first kind. Why is that so? Because if you look at this guy, we have three to the power some polynomial. Polynomial is everywhere differentiable. It is defined everywhere. It is differentiable everywhere. And then you put it in the exponent of three. So exponential functions are defined everywhere and it is differentiable everywhere. So we won't have any of the first type of the critical points. How about second one? Well, let's do that. We have to differentiate. So we have to find f prime x. Remember, so this is a good point to recall that if you have b to the power u, the derivative of b to the power u or derivative of exponential function plus the chain rule is going to be b to the power u since the base can be general, you have to multiply it by ln b, and then you multiply that by u prime. Okay, so here we have three x to the power of four minus eight x cubed plus six x squared um, plus one. This is u prime. Then ln of base here is three. And then three to the power, three X to the power four minus eight X cubed plus six X squared plus one. Okay. So we try to differentiate 12 X cubed minus 24 X squared uh, plus 12 X times long three, three to the power three X to the power four minus eight X three plus 6x squared plus 1. And now I should set this guy to be equal to 0, if prime x equals to 0. Well, this whole thing, I will set it equal to 0. Oops. OK. Here's what you have to know. There are three things, multiple, uh, actually, let me just, yes, let me just write three things here. Equal to, multiplied and then equal to zero. So that means that either the first one is equal to zero. Or ln of three is equal to zero or b to the power 3x to the power 4 minus 8x cubed plus 6x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So, ln 3 is not 0. Ln of 1 is the only root of ln. So that means that this guy cannot be true. On the other hand, we have in the third one, we have 3 to the power n number exponential function, three to the power, anything you put there, they never intersect 
intercept the x-axis. So they don't have any root. So that means that this cannot be true. Or other way of saying that three to the power, any number you put, it will be a number not equal to zero. So the only part that will make uh, x will make f prime equal to zero will be this piece here. Okay, so now we have to solve this piece. 12 x cubed minus 24 x squared plus 12 x must be equal to zero. Okay, you look at this function, say that, okay, this is quadratic, goodbye, I cannot solve it. But wait a minute. If you can reduce the power or factor of some factors, you're good to go. Here, I can see that 12x is factor of all three parts. So I can, if I can factor out 12x, this will give us uh, x squared minus 2x Oh, look at this one. This is quadratic. And actually, I know how to uh, write this. This is x minus 1 squared. Yeah? And from this, we conclude that 0 and 1 are two points, or two values of x, which make f prime equal to 0. So let me rewrite everything because since I, I, I factored this piece and I wrote it 12 x, x minus one uh, squared ln three, three to the power uh, three x to the power four minus eight x cubed plus six x squared. For a minute, I will get back to this. Uh, and then um, we saw that these two guys are critical points. Well, that's good. We found the critical points, but now we have to bring in the test. Either you bring in the test, the second derivative test or first derivative test. Here, since we already have uh, f prime and we can, we, we did simplify that, it will be used to use the first derivative test. So let's use the first derivative test. Here the values are 0, 1, and at 0 and 1, f prime is 0. And now we want to go and see what will happen in, the, in between. This is what you need to know. You know that 3 to the power 3x is good. 3 to the power any number uh, will give you a positive number. So this guy here is going to be always positive. Ln of 3, ln of any number bigger than 1 is a positive number. So this is also a positive number. That means that the sine of f prime will only depend on that part there. So if you choose any any values there, 1 over 2, and uh, let's say negative 1. And then evaluate just this part. You don't need to evaluate all the f prime because you just need to know what is the sign of this, uh, this part here. So if you uh, plug in uh, negative 1, you will see, oh, by the way, actually, it's, it's even simpler than what I said. This guy here is a square, so this is always positive. There's only one thing here, 12x. If x is less than 0, this will be negative. If x is bigger than 0, this will be positive. So it will be positive, positive there, negative. Now, look at uh, where uh, the critical points were. Here at zero, before zero, the, the f prime is negative. After the uh, zero, f prime is positive. It means that f was decreasing, then increasing. So that means that f has a relative 
mean at x equal to zero? How about the other critical point? Well, in the other critical point, first it was increasing and then again increasing. So that means that the function will be something like that. And, and as a result, one, uh, F doesn't have have any critical, uh, any uh, relative extrema at x equal to one. x equal to one was a point, was a critical point, but it doesn't give us any relative uh, max or mean. Well, how about the value? Okay, so f at zero is three to the power three, zero to the power four minus eight times zero to the power three plus six times zero to the power two plus one. This is three to the power one, and that is three. So this is um, a relative mean value of f. And that finishes what we were trying to do here. 